Well, thank you so much, everybody. Uh, this is really fantastic, this technology. Here I am sitting in an office here in Toronto, and I get to join you in beautiful British Columbia. So are you having fun today? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, well, financial literacy can sometimes seem a little dry, but it's something that you need to know for the rest of your life. And so I'm just going to tell you a little bit about what I do here at CTV. And then I'm going to talk about a few other issues that I hope will uh, help protect you as you get older. And then I hope you'll have a few questions for me as well. So uh, I am the consumer reporter here at CTV News in Toronto. And I've also written a book. And every, uh, every author loves to plug their books. So this one was actually for young people, my last book, The Smart, Savvy, Young Consumer. Because I think young people are going to have to work uh, harder than ever probably harder than I did and our parents, grandparents, because as we do know, it is a very competitive uh, marketplace out there. Uh, we know that uh, homes are so expensive. Uh, a house in Toronto now is over a million dollars. And I certainly know in Vancouver, you have homes that cost even more than that. So it can be a little depressing when you're a younger person, but there are many things you can do to make sure that you'll be just fine as you get older and one of them is just to be a good saver and a good spender. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. I just want to tell you briefly, uh, I've been at CTV quite a long time now. And when I started at CTV, I was actually uh, started out as a general assignment reporter. So what that means is that I would do the story of the day. So I would do great stories like go up in a hot air balloon or meet uh, Wayne Gretzky or talk to movie stars and singers. But then I would also have to do depressing stories as well, stories like murder trials and accidents and uh, things like that that I really didn't enjoy very much. So what CTV said to me is, uh, Pat, do you want to try a consumer segment where we can give people good information, uh, news you can use, as they say? And I've been doing that for about uh, 15 years, and it's been quite a success. People uh, like to get good information. I actually traveled to Vancouver to help set up the On Your Side segment at CTV there. And uh, some of you that watch CTV News will know that Linda Steele uh, does the On Your Side segment and does a fantastic job helping people uh, in Vancouver and British Columbia. So, uh, you know, when I first started uh, as the consumer guy, I thought I would run out of stories, I'd run out of ideas. But every day I get about uh, 50 to 100 emails. I get phone calls. There's still some people that write letters, not too many anymore, uh, but many people with problems, and most of the problems have to do with finances. So it's people that didn't know there's no cooling off period when you buy a car. Uh, they signed a mortgage for five years and then found out that there's a mortgage penalty if they want to break it. They didn't pay their credit card bills. Or here, I'll just tell you this story. Uh, we have a 407 toll highway here in the Toronto area, and 13 years ago, a woman ran up her toll bill to about $2,000. Well, she just got a letter in the mail that she has to pay $24,000 because over 13 years, that interest just kept growing and growing and growing. So, you know, people, a lot of the time, people, when they contact me, they're looking for someone to blame, uh, some organization. But the truth is, is that many of the financial mistakes we make are our own fault. And that's why it's so important to try to be a good saver and spender early. So, um, you know, I, I do try to help people every day and we do put good information on, uh, on television. And uh, I do believe that uh, financial literacy is more important now than ever in Canada. And there's a lot of great work being done. I was actually in Vancouver in November for a financial literacy conference. It was a national conference. And I know that you guys are doing some great work out there. And uh, Ms. Moore deserves a lot of credit and the other teachers and instructors for setting up this today because you're going to learn things uh, today that you'll remember for the rest of your life and that can help save you a lot of money. So a lot of progress has been made, uh, but there's a lot more to do. And uh, these are some of the things that we want to talk to you because many parents believe that it's important to talk to their children about money, uh, but many parents don't. In fact, uh, only 18% in a recent survey found that parents actually talk to their kids about money. Can I ask, uh, put up your hands, how many uh, of your parents talk to you about money at home, about paying the bills? Okay, that's good. Because 
you know, you really do want to know, okay, so how many people have a cell phone? Put up your hand. Okay. How many people pay for that cell phone? Oh, I've got a couple people. That's good. My two daughters, uh, Vanessa and Sarah, uh, they, I make them pay for their cell phones. And uh, I think it's a good thing. I think it's good for everyone to know about home insurance and mortgage insurance and how much it costs to fill up the car and things like that. I'll just tell you briefly, when my daughter was in grade 11, she came home and said, Dad, uh, I have a chance to go to Tanzania, Africa, and it's only $5,000. And I said, well, Vanessa, $5,000 is a lot of money. Uh, so I tell you what, you get a job and pay half and I'll pay half. And she did. She saved up her money and she went on the trip. And she told me, Dad, you know, I was one of the only kids on the trip that had to help pay for my you know, trip to Africa. And I said, well, lucky you. And uh, now my daughter is older and she's so good with her money. She's actually taken just some time off university to be a tour guide at Vimy Ridge in France. And she's uh, saving money and doing very well. And my other daughter's in grade 12, so like some of you, she's having to make decisions about getting ready to go to university, uh, but she has a job at our local library, and she has also become very good with her money. So I think it's important to always try to be the best saver and spender you can be, because as we all know, it's very easy to dig yourself into debt, and it's very hard to get out of it once you do that. So it is very important to try to be a good saver and spender early. So I was uh, with a task force that traveled the country, and uh, what we found out, whether it was in Vancouver or uh, Newfoundland or Saskatoon, is that many people have the same problems uh, with their saving and spending. People are just spending too much, uh, dining out too much, spending a lot of money on clothing. We uh, heard about a doctor who made $300,000 a year, and he was still in debt. So it's not how much you make, it's how much you save. So all of us can try to be better savers and spenders. It's so important to do that. I always use the example when people go out and dine out and they say, well, it's just $100 a week to dine out. But if you do the math, that's over $5,000 a year. So all these small expenses can really add up. Now, again, I, I always have to be careful because I don't want <laughs> young people to be too concerned that and too depressed about things because uh, certainly, you know, there, we do have higher home prices, we do have higher taxation coming, and uh, right now it's a very competitive job market. You have to be very careful. I know when I graduated from broadcast journalism many years ago, uh, I got a job and was working uh, on television within two months, which was pretty, pretty cool for me at the time. Now there are many young people that are going to university and college for broadcast journalism and it's unfortunately become a shrinking job market. There's been some layoffs recently. We've even moved to robotic cameras in our studio. So uh, the people have been replaced with robots, which is kind of bizarre if you see it. But uh, what I'm saying is that while many people grew up and they had one job for a long time, I believe that many young people, such as yourselves, could have several different jobs over your career. So you're just going to have to be ready to... Uh, you know, make uh, certain choices and, and maybe not have the exact same job. You may have the exact same job uh, like your parents or you may be needing to switch it up, uh, but uh, that's okay too. So I think everyone has a role to play when it comes to financial literacy and uh, your parents do, uh, you do, the school system does. Uh, since we've been talking about financial literacy, a, a lot has been done, and I think your school is doing something great today by organizing this event. And uh, across the country this year, there, there will be about 1,500 different financial literacy events, uh, which is a great thing. So uh, people are talking about money, they're trying to find out about credit cards, they're trying to find out about loans. And, and it's all good. Even if you hear things repeated again and again, it's good for you to know what a tax-free savings account is. It's good for you to know about registered uh, retirement savings and all of these things. So with Talk to Your Kids About Money Day, we just had that. Did you, uh, I think this is a national thing. Did you guys hear about Talk to Your Kids About Money Day about a week or two ago? Maybe not. Okay. Well, that's something that should be coming uh, to British Columbia if it's not there already. But I know that you're doing a lot of great work in British Columbia. We, we studied that with the task force. But talk with your kids about Money Day 
is all about parents talking to their kids about uh, you know how much is a mortgage, uh, you know how does a credit card work, and how does credit card interest work? If you're not paying for your cell phone, how much is the cell phone? Uh, how much is car insurance? What is life insurance? What are these different things? And when you're younger, you might think that these things aren't that important, but boy, it doesn't take long before you're into your 20s and you'll need to know about these things. And often, uh, you know, young people that don't have a good handle on their financial literacy, they can end up in uh, with a lot of student debt, forty thousand dollars. Then you get out of school, you might have to move home. You don't have a job. Next thing you know, you're 25 years old and you owe fifty thousand dollars. And uh, well, there's nothing wrong with borrowing money to get a good education. You do want to try and pay that back as soon as you can. So you just want to. You wouldn't believe it. If you can try to be a good saver and a good spender early, it's just going to make such a huge difference in your life. Now, when I do a book signings, uh, just for example, talking about parents with um, advising their kids about money, a young woman told me that uh, her father always said that when he died, he would leave her the house. He said, when I die, I'm going to leave you my house. I'm going to leave you my house. He said this all the time. But she said when he finally did die, she, she did get the house but she didn't know anything about home ownership. She didn't know that she had to pay the hydro bill and the gas bill. She didn't know that there would be maintenance costs, that the roof would eventually need fixing. She didn't know that there would be taxes to pay. So it's very important that families discuss money and a lot of families don't want to, uh, partially because uh, there could be debt issues within a family as well or people just find it a hard subject to talk about. But as young people, you need to know and you need to ask questions and try to engage your, your parents or, uh, you know, older people in your life and ask questions about things, leasing versus buying, renting, mortgages, all these things. You should know about them. So let me see here. Now, also, uh, I did a TED talk at a uh, high school last week, and I think that it's important also to note that there are many different pathways to success. Uh, I met a doctor. One thing I like about television is I meet so many different people and I'm always curious about, uh, you know, their education and their lives. And I talked to a specialist doctor uh, last week and I asked her, how long did you go to school to become a specialist? And she said 16 years in medical school, which is a long time. And then I think of my friend uh, Bob. When I first moved to Bathurst, New Brunswick to get my first full-time television job, my friend Bob, he uh, bought a transport truck and uh, now uh, I've done okay in the television business and my friend Bob now has 100 transport trucks. So he uh, graduated from high school but he, he just chose a different path to success and now runs a multi-million dollar business. So as you start to think about what you want to do in your life, there are, there are many different pathways to success and I'm sure if you think about it and study it, you'll, you'll find the right one for you. Now again, as I said, many of the complaints that I get from people, they, they make bad decisions, they're looking to blame other people, but often the people that are to blame uh, are themselves. They've made bad decisions, they, they you know, sign contracts without reading the contracts, they've entered into agreements, they're not really sure what they're getting into. And uh, I might repeat myself, but this is something that I always tell people, and it's important for young people to know too, is you should never sign anything at the door or agree to anything on the phone or send anything on the internet that you did not seek out yourself. So if you get a spam email or something like that, don't open it, don't answer it. If someone comes to your door trying to sell you something, be very, very careful before agreeing to that. And if someone phones you out of the blue to say you've won a trip or you, you know, uh, you got a cruise or uh, something, it's usually a scam and you should just not do it. And that's how a lot of the people that I speak to get into a lot of trouble. Okay, so just a couple of things. I know that uh, I'm hoping that you'll have a few questions for me. I'm just going to go through a couple of things that I hope will help you as young people. I want to tell you that, uh, first of all, how many people here are on Facebook? Okay, quite a few. How many people here are on Twitter? Okay, not as many. All right. Uh, there was a young girl who was so excited to get her first credit card that she actually took a picture of it and put it on Facebook. 
And, uh, you know, there was her number as plain as day. So people started writing her to ask. They said, wow, can you tell me what are the three numbers on the back of the car? And she's like, oh, okay, well, here are the three numbers on the back of the car. Well, can you imagine all the trouble that that poor girl got into just because she was so anxious to show everybody that she had a credit card? So obviously, if you get a credit card, please don't do that. That wasn't uh, wise. I think she got in a lot of trouble for that. But you want to try to guard your uh, personal information and be careful of identity theft. Okay. Now, you want to be careful on Facebook and Twitter uh, because this is something important for young people to know. Whatever you put on Facebook and Twitter, you have to be careful because there could be a record of it out on the Internet for a long, long time. So what is happening now is that when people are hiring people, they are going through social media searches. So before someone hires you, they're going to check through your Twitter, your Facebook, anything they can find on the Internet to find out what kind of person you are, what kind of things do you say, what kind of pictures do you have out there. You know, is there a picture of someone uh, dancing on a, on a bar with a lampshade on their head? That's something that you don't want to have on the Internet. So just be very careful about what you're tweeting, what you're putting on Facebook. Uh, it's actually got to the point now where there are companies that have been hired to try to clean up someone's uh, social media past. But just be very careful uh, what you're putting out there, okay? And... Uh, you also have to be careful with your signature. There are so many people that don't realize that your signature is so important and people sign things without really thinking about it. If you're ever asked to sign anything as you get older, be very careful what you're signing and ask yourself, why am I being asked to sign this? Because your signature is a binding, it's binding on contracts and agreements. So I often get to people that didn't know when they signed a timeshare plan or they, they bought a car and then they change their mind and they think, well, it's just a signature, but your signature is very, very important. Now, I think another thing that uh, I think is great that your school is doing this, uh, I believe that there should be a, a mandatory uh, financial literacy course in every high school in the country. And British Columbia is actually ahead on uh, many fronts on this, and, and I congratulate British Columbia for that. We're a little behind in Ontario, actually. but. I think that it's a great idea because there are so many things you can use. I remember being in grade 12 and uh, taking chemistry and using a Bunsen burner. And after I left high school, I never used a Bunsen burner again. But if I would have had to learn about uh, mortgages and credit cards and interest rates, I think that I really would have been better served and I think a lot of young people would be better served as well. It's important to know if you ever lose your credit card or bank card or even your cell phone that you need to report it right away. Uh, I do many stories on people who lose a bank card. The other thing you want to make sure is don't have an easy to recognize PIN number. I did a story on a woman who had her uh, purse stolen and she, she didn't report it to the bank and the thief was able to guess that she used her PIN number as her birthday and actually took out $15,000. Now normally when I do these stories, especially when it involves a senior, the bank gives the money back. But they didn't this time because they said that the woman used a, a too easy to recognize pin, her birthday, uh, and her birthday was on another card in her wallet. So they didn't give her her money back. So if you ever lose a credit card or a bank card or your cell phone, you, you will be forgiven if you report it within a day or two, but if you let it go a week or 10 days or longer, you might not get your money back, so be careful with that. Another thing that you need to know when you do get your uh, credit cards, and everybody, you pretty much need one these days to uh, live, is you want to make sure that you pay off your credit card bills every month. You want to do that. Only about half of all people in Canada pay off their credit card bills every month. And the interest rates uh, is usually about 19%. And on department store cards, it can be as high as 29%. And once you start getting debt on a card like that, you'll find that you uh, could you know, only be paying off the interest. So you don't want to be doing that. Uh, another thing is how many people in here know uh, what their credit rating or credit score is? Has anybody ever heard of a credit rating, credit score? Okay, just tell you this briefly, your credit score is a number that will follow you around for the rest of your life. So it's a number between 300 and 900, 
A good credit score is anywhere above 750, and a bad one can be five or 600. So what does this mean? So it means if you have credit card bills or cell phone bills or you pay the rent, every time you make your payments on time, your credit card score is good and will go up. If you start missing payments or you don't pay your bills, your credit score will go down. So sometimes people make mistakes where they say, oh, the phone company is $60 or $75, and they think, oh, well, it's only $70. I don't care. I'm, I'm switching phones. I'm not going to pay it. Well, that will go on your credit card or on your credit rating, and it'll follow you around for seven years, seven years. So just make sure you always pay your bills on time. Uh, your credit score is very important, and it's something that you want to make sure that you keep in good standing. So just lastly, I want to tell you, uh, I worked for a millionaire farmer one time, and uh, I asked him, what's your secret to success, Fred? And he said to me, Pat, if you just make the right decisions every day, then you will be successful. If you take a little extra time to make the right decisions every day, you can't help but be a success. So I wish all of you the best success. I hope that you can see and hear this okay. It's kind of fun for me too. And uh, if you have any questions, I'll take a few questions. Well, that's a good question. Many people think that you uh, you can, well, you really do need a credit card now to exist in, in society. And you'll find that when you get older and you go to university, uh, if you want to book train tickets home or if you want to book a flight home, you need a credit card. So it's very difficult to get along in life now without a credit card. The best thing to do, though, is start off, as I've done with my daughters, is just start off with a credit card with a low limit of $500. And then as you get older and you can take on more debt, you can raise the limit. The problem that some people get into is that they have not just one credit card, but two, three. I actually interviewed a woman one time that had 11 credit cards and she had the limits jacked up on all of them. And she was just trying to make the minimum monthly payments from one card to the other to the other. And she was just getting nowhere. And so it's sad, but sometimes people, when they get into this situation, they might have to declare a financial bankruptcy, which is something that you don't want to do because that'll be on your record for seven years. So to answer your question, you're probably going to need a credit card. Just make sure you're careful with it and keep the uh, balance low on it. Well, that's a good question. I'll tell you what I did with my own daughter, who's uh, quite good with her money. She's 20 years old now. What you want to do, some of the best ways to save money is to open a tax-free savings account. Now, what that does is that lets you, uh, like normally if you invest in a, in a stock and it goes up, you have to pay the government some of the money uh, that, that the stock has made. But if you invest in a, a tax-free savings account, any money that you make is yours. You get to keep it. So it's called a TFSA, and what I do is tell people, like for my own daughter, I told her put $50 a month into a, a dividend fund or $50 a month into an equity fund and have it automatically come out of your bank account. Now, I know that's hard to do when you're young and you, know, you don't have a lot of money, but she's been doing it uh, ever since she turned 18, and she's had part-time jobs, and uh, she now has several thousand dollars in there, and that's going to be able to help her when she's done university to either buy a car or put a down payment to, on a place to live. So it's called forced savings, paying yourself first. And I think that's the best thing that anybody can do is open a tax-free savings account when you turn 18. And even if you only put $25 a month into it, just to get the savings started, because it doesn't take long before all those savings add up. Okay, well, thank you very much, and congratulations to uh, all of you for putting this together. And uh, and I hope the, the students... Uh, have a great day, and I wish them every success. So thank you very much for thinking of me, too.